Okay, Bella, this week we're going to start a uh, big unit on polynomials. So this is kind of laying the foundation for a lot of math that we're going to be doing in July. And uh, my goal for today is, is pretty simple and straightforward. We're going to multiply polynomials. But before we get into that, uh, we have to make sure we understand what a polynomial is. Because you may have heard it in Mr. Bounds' class, but uh, I'm willing to bet you know you have a limited knowledge of what a polynomial is at best. Now, if you know uh, if you if you've heard the word poly before, like that Latin prefix, like for example, polytheistic religions believe in many gods, right? The words po the, the prefix poly literally means many. Um, so when we're talking about polynomial, we're talking about numbers that have many terms. So it literally translates to many terms, but they still represent single values. So I'm going to show you a bunch here in just a second. So the second part of this definition of what a polynomial is says that it's a quantity, right? So to give you examples here, like 3x is a quantity, all right? And that's also a polynomial. It falls under that category. x minus 2 is a quantity. I can't simplify this any further. I can treat this as a single value. We've seen that a little bit already this uh, this summer. So x minus 2 is a polynomial. 3x is a polynomial. Any expression really that you can't simplify is a polynomial. And the, the rest of these are as well. So some of them are really complicated, right? Um, this whole big expression here. It might look like it should be simplified, but it actually can't, and we'll learn why this week. So this technically is a single term, a single quantity, and it's called a, po a polynomial. Um, now, one thing to consider here um, is that polynomials cannot contain variables in a denominator. And you'll again, you'll see all of this um, as we move through the chapter. But you cannot have something where, like, okay, if you have this, this is a good example, 2 over x plus 2. So polynomials never have um, any variables in the denominator. It's just not something that's included in the definition. But anything that's, any expression that includes um, constants, meaning just any numbers, constants, variables, and positive integer exponents, basically everything that you see right here are examples of polynomials and we're going to do lots of different operations with them now for today we're just going to focus on multiplication uh, so we'll take this one step at a time now we're going to look focus on a specific type of polynomial and that's called a monomial so now we have the prefix mono and it says fyi so called because they do not include any sums or differences so if i just go back to this slide for a second just to make a distinction um, this right here 3x is technically a monomial because it's just a single quantity that has no plus or minus sign. Um, x minus 2 is a polynomial, but to be more specific, it's referred to as a binomial because it's made up of two distinct terms, x and negative 2. So this right here, 3x, would be a monomial, whereas x minus 2 would be a binomial. It's all just sort of technicalities, though. The only word you really need to understand is polynomial. Everything here falls under the umbrella of polynomials. Okay, so back to it here. Um, we're going to multiply monomials today. Now, the, ba the basic rule that, I, that you've learned actually in eighth grade, uh, although it's probably been a while, is that whenever you're multiplying like bases, meaning when the variables are the same, for example, I have x squared and x to the third, I could multiply these because they both have the same base. And when the bases are the same, we just add the exponents. So to start with a real simple example here, I'm just going to jump around. We have k to the 8th power times k. In other words, k to the 8th power times k to the 1st power. And that just gives us k to the 9th power. Because if I were to write this out with all, without, without the exponents, just all be a bunch of k's, right? I'm not going to do it, but just to give you the idea, that would be k to the 3rd power. And I would have to write out all these powers of k. Well, how many are there all together? Well, that'd be 9. So it's just k to the ninth power. Then now I have t to the 7th times t to the 6th. Think about what that one would be. Well, the bases are the same, so we just add the exponents. This would be t to the 13th power. Now I can also do this when there's constants, right? So don't confuse this with the exponents. We just, we're multiplying everything that we can here, right? Well, the constants 2 and 5 multiply to give us 10. And then w squared times w squared is w to the fourth. I just add the two and the two. Same rule here. If I have 3e e to the third times 7e e to the third. Well, my constants 3 and 7 multiply to give me 21. 
And then I multiply e to the third times e to the third to get e to the sixth. So you're essentially doing two things. You're multiplying the constants and adding the exponents. Um, I'll do one more. It's just a little bit more complicated here. We have negative 3L squared W to the third times 2LW to the fourth. So we have constants, negative 3 and 2. I got L's and I got W's. Well, the constants are easy enough. They just multiply to give us negative 6. And now look here, I have two powers of L in this term. I have one power of L in this monomial, so three powers of L. So that's negative 6, L to the third. And finally, I have three powers of W here, four power, powers of W over here. That's W to the seventh. So negative 6, L to the third, W to the seventh is your simplified answer. Okay, now one other thing we'll look at today, and I'm just going to do two simple examples for right now because I want to keep this kind of short, is we're going to take powers of monomials. So here's the monomial, 6t to the fifth, and it's being raised to the second power. Now there's two ways of thinking about this. One uh, is uh, sort of like writing this expression without the exponent. So if I wrote t 6t to the fifth times 6t to the fifth, if I just multiply that by itself, this is another way of saying this. I'm just taking, I'm rewriting this expression without the exponent 2. And then you could solve this the exact same way we just did. I'd multiply my constants. 6 and 6 gives us 36. And then I would add my exponents. 5 and 5 gives us t to the 10th. But you may notice here, if you look at where we started and you look at what our final answer is, there is a shortcut to this. Whenever you have an exponent outside the parentheses, you can take everything that's inside the parentheses and raise it to that power. So, for example, I can take the constant 6 and raise it to the second power. That gives me 36. I can take t to the fifth, and then I multiply the exponents. 5 times 2 gives us t to the tenth. So like it says right here, when raising a monomial to a power, either write out the expression, like I did right here, or just multiply the exponents, like we did right here. Okay, so one more and then I'll leave you with that. We have 9c to the 6th d raised to the second power. And again, you could write this without the, the, the 2. I could say, okay, 9c to the 6th d times... 9c to the 6th d. Or you could try that shortcut where you take all three terms inside the parentheses, 9c to the 6th and d, and raise them to the second power. Um, try it either way. Give yourself, I'll give you a second here, see if you can get the answer. If you want, go ahead and pause the video and try it. Otherwise, here it is. The answer would be 81c to the 12th d squared. So these are the problems that we're going to be looking at today. Um, understanding A, what a, mon what a polynomial is, and then B, um, working with polynomials and multiplication. That's going to be the focus for today.